Well, we're working on uh, some catching some raccoons and we're gonna be using this Duke dog proof. For anybody out there uh, that's not familiar with these, these are a great tool for homeowners, landowners, people that are trying to protect their deer feed, farmers, ranchers, and trappers alike. This is the Duke Dog Proof. What it is, is a DP, which obviously stands for dog proof. And you can see there's a cylinder here. And what the, you do is you put the bait in, you wanna keep it underneath the trigger. And then when the coons come up after it's set, they reach down in because they have the tangible fingertips. They pull up on the trigger and they get caught. And this is a really good device because it allows you to go into areas where there's dogs, where there's cats, things of that nature that won't get caught in these. They're very easy to set. They have a, a triple swivel system here. You have on the base a swivel that goes around, and then you have these other two swivels that are uh, halfway down the chain and then at the end. So you have three different swivel points that if a coon gets caught in there, they can have full range of motion. It's very easy on them, and they're right here when you come in to check. To set them, it's very easy. You, all you gotta do is get this notch in that after you pull back on the actual lever. So once you get that in there, you can see that that trap is fully set now. You're gonna put your bait down in this hole, and then when they reach in there, pull up on the trigger, just like this, that catches them and holds them in the trap. And it's just a fantastic device. That's what we're going to be using most all of our coon sets. We are going to put a couple one and a half double jaw dukes in, but more often than not, these are a coon getter, and we're going to be using our coon buster bait and also our uh, magnet trailing set. I'm just going to put the uh, rebar in with this one. You can actually tie off with a. Uh, extension uh, cable whatever around a tree or whatever but we're just gonna right here on this trail we're in a good spot and i fully expect to have some coon here when we come back in but as you can see it's very easy to set and all you got to do is push this right down in the ground and now it's ready to go we'll get our stake in And that now has full range of motion. We get a coon, he's gonna be right here in that DP. And there's really, that's all it takes to put these in the ground. So we're gonna be moving through a lot of stuff in this show and other shows, but that is exactly how easy it is to set one of these DPs. These Duke DPs are gonna catch every coon that comes by if you got something down there. We're using our Coon Buster bait, which is a crawfish type scent and it's fantastic basically all you're getting is a tablespoon full and that's going right down in the cylinder just down under there and then all we're doing to top that off is we're going to use our magnet trailing set and i'm just putting a little around the rim and a little bit that way so when them coons are working up here their nose hits that or if they're coming this way, their nose hits that. They work right into the trap. They see it, they're reaching down in, they hit that trigger, and they're right here to the next morning. I'll talk to you a little bit about the Duke DP. Uh, DP stands for dog proof. Um, it really is just an invaluable tool for every homeowner out there, rancher, farmer, uh, deer hunter that's having problems with raccoons eating your deer feed. This can be set anywhere around your house, anywhere where there's dogs and cats. They're not gonna get caught. How this works is you pull up on the trigger. Dogs and cats actually can't pull up because they don't have the tangible fingers that a raccoon, a skunk, or a possum have. It's also very easy to set. You're just pulling back on this and getting the notch up on that. That trap is now set and it's ready to go. You put your bait in, whether it be coon buster, you know, marshmallow, whatever you want to use, um, and the animal's gonna come by, they're gonna reach down in, pull up on that trigger, and they're gonna get caught right there. It's something that is absolutely necessary for a lot of situations that are going on right now with homeowners 
having problems with coons getting under your you know garage or, or actually pet conflicts or your farmers that are having problems with uh, them destroying your crops deer hunters eating your corn eating your deer feed this tool is something that will allow you to take those problem animals out of your equation and have the the mindset or know that you're not going to be catching dogs and cats as well so make sure you check out some of the Duke EPs for what your needs are and they are going to be a fantastic tool and item for you when you're out there uh, taking care of these problem critters yeah this guy's a little feisty aren't you buddy well we got a uh, nice coon here we actually have three DPs right here where they come in on this trail up under um, this one here is a really nice coon for this time of year he's not rubbed at all that's actually a really nice fur uh, right behind the camera there we have one of the game cameras set up so we're probably going to have some uh, some good footage of him coming in here and uh, working the set so that's something but ultimately we're right here on the edge of the river we have a couple fence rows that meet here a plowed corn field but anytime you can work these pinch points where you have some running cottonwood draws or ditches wherever you're at in this country fence rows all these uh, predators are going to work those fence rows looking for uh, you know food sources and, and you know this is a plowed corn field so there's corn out here there's going to be you know ground nesting birds their their quarry down in the bottom here but this is a really nice coon and uh, he uh, he's a feisty one but uh, just get out here put these sets in you can see he's right down in that DP that Duke dog proof um, and uh, they're gonna work for you and we're gonna get this coon taken care of remake this set um, like I said we got this line of three right here he might have been by himself but that uh, footage on that game camera is gonna let us know what uh, what actually transpired but uh, ultimately uh, just find these locations like this and, and you're gonna do a good job on controlling the predators um, on your land or your farm or your your uh, ranch as well but uh, just an awesome awesome day out here well we got a nice double here today uh, this really we have a lot of sets down here on the river and this this corner right here stood out to me we have a field here there's really nothing out in the field and there's really nothing here except this one fence row but this corner stuck out to me and anytime you can have a, a position in any place that you're trapping where you have a, a feature a landline or, or you know something of that nature a fence row a, a single tree anything of that nature it's going to attract all the different predators um, we got two nice coon here today we got two sets in made a double as you can see they can't reach each other because we tied one off on each pole and make sure you uh, remember that when you're out there to put your traps far enough away to where they can't get in one and then get over and get in the other but uh, just uh, a little bit more on this predation stuff we're here in South Dakota uh, they have that predation program that Governor Gnomes uh, put in place the last couple years um, they did a study in Texas back in the late 90s where they actually simulated quail nests and they did a few hundred different nests and they found that over 90% of the predation on those quail nests were done by raccoons. So, you know, if you could take a few of these predators out of the equation you're going to help your ground nesting birds out there plus it gets you out here and gives you a lot of fun out in nature as well. But uh, it looks like two really nice uh, big boar coon, and uh, we'll get them taken care of, reset these, and uh, hopefully come back in tomorrow and have another dump. Well, this week I want to talk to you, give you a little hint in using these uh, Duke dog proofs. This Duke DP, uh, we have a cable extension on this one, but these DPs are a really good tool for you deer hunters out there trying to save money on uh, all the coons eating all your deer feed now if you're running a, a big ranch and and you uh have a deer farm or anything of that nature and you're putting out feed for your deer the raccoons and animals are probably pounding you and really what you're doing is feeding nature but uh to handle those issues these duke dog proofs will work for you the one tip that i want to give you on that though when you set these do not set these on your feed pile 
move them off about 20, 30 yards, find the trails that these animals are working in, set it back off of the feed in the middle of the trail. You're gonna catch them away from the food source because if you do catch them around the food source, you're gonna catch them the first night or two, but the other ones there are gonna wise up quickly and they're gonna stay away from it. They're gonna associate that with danger. So if you are gonna use the Duke Dog Proofs around your deer feed, make sure you move it off of the feed 20, 30 yards, catch them working into it, and they won't associate your food source with danger. Well, when you're out there coot trapping, you know, you can make a lot of different sets. When you're on sign, you put the dog proofs in, but also you can make some other sets and variations along these stream banks. And one of those is actually a pocket set. And, you know, there's a lot of different theories out there. There's a lot of different people that are gonna tell you, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. Honestly, Really, if you just make some disturbance here and make a little hole, that's really all that is necessary. So for my pocket set, I like to go right into the bank first and then just pull down. Now this was a trowel that I had welded for me by a friend of mine and it works perfect for that. But I go down at a 90 degree angle and just pull out. And when I do that, basically that creates a place now for my trap. And that's where my trap's gonna go right here. Now, what I can do then is then go back into the bank. And once you get back in there, now you're creating your hole to where all your bait's gonna go. And as you can see, I can make that back in there just like that. My trap is now gonna be in about an inch of water right there. And that hole goes back up in there. That's all I really need to do. And that is a pocket set. You can make it, uh, bigger you can make it smaller but they're all going to basically do the trick when you get that trap bedded in there and getting that animal working up in there now what i'm using here is a duke one and a half double jaw as you can see that double jaw has a uh the top jaw but it also has two different about half inch down indentions on it that is a double jaw and that's what constitutes this as a double jaw and what that will do is if you catch an animal on this, they can't get under there and work their pad, and you're gonna have that animal when you come here. Place that right here at the mouth now, just like that. Move that out of the way, and we're good to go. Now, there's really not much else to making that set other than putting our bait, and if you wanted lure, you can put some of that here as well. And with this reaper, we're just going to put about a tablespoon like that back in the hole. And that's really all there's needed to do right there. Um, if you wanted, you could put a little lure. You could do that. We may just put some of our magnet trailing scent right there. Get them working down in there. But that's really all it takes to make a pocket set. Well, this week I want to talk to you about pretty much my overall favorite trap of all time, the one and a half double jaw duke. And the reason I love it so much is it's a pretty universal trap. You're going to be able to catch raccoon, skunk, possum, fox, mink, muskrat, uh, even front feet for beaver in these things with the right drowning rig. And ultimately, uh, I love it so much because I know with that double jaw that's on this trap that if I do get an animal in this, he's going to be there when I go check. That animal's not going to be able to get under there, work that foot, and get out of the trap. And when you put out all that effort and you put all that time in the field, you want that animal there when you go check. And these double jaws pretty much guarantee that that animal's going to be there. Uh, if they go off and they're on that animal, he's not going to be able to get under there, work his foot, and you're going to have them when you go to check. But ultimately, I'd highly recommend you get an opportunity to check out these Duke one half double jaws. And I think you're going to be very happy with how they perform for you in the field. I wanted to take a little time here and talk about an area I've said for the last 30 years as well. Uh, this is actually a game trail that goes right here out into a cornfield. They come down off this mountain across the road, up through these trails to eat the corn, across this little ditch. Now this ditch usually has some muskrats in it, but you can see the, the path that they have here. And I like to slick that up. I'm a big fan when I'm doing anything um, with... Uh, 
raccoons or, or water animals, whether it's beaver, coon, things of that nature, I'm gonna like a good slick bank. And that just makes it eye appeal and uh, the animals, I don't really need to do that here. They're already using it, but I like to make it slick. So if they're thinking about going over here, they're gonna continue to go uh, where I have it slicked up. But uh, I have a Duke one and a half double jaw. Um, I like the double jaw. It's got that extra jaw underneath that uh, the mink, coon, muskrat, if they do get in the trap, they can't get under there and work that foot. Uh, and you're gonna have them if you catch them, they're gonna be here when you get here. And when you put all this work in, you definitely want them here when you come in. As I said, I like this Duke double jaw. It's a great trap. It's gonna catch any mink, muskrat, coon that comes by here. And I have a little, just push that mud down to make a little spot for your trap. And your trap goes right in, right there, down in the mud. Take a little leaves or brush, put that over the chain. And uh, that's pretty much all I need to do. I could catch every one of these in a blind set because they're already working this. You know, they're coming down this bank, they're climbing up here, they're coming from on this other side across. This is just a main travel way. But ultimately, if you have any of these farm ditches and uh, you have muskrats and, and coons, you set these up. We have three or four sets up through here. Uh, this is another spot. When I did my coon video, I think I sat in here and had uh, a triple the first night, and I pretty much put the same four sets up through here. There's four main trails, game trails, that come across. Now there's deer working them. Sometimes your traps are gonna be set off, but that's just part of the game. You're gonna have to deal with that. But uh, I have four traps up through here and I fully expect some animals here in the next day or so. Um, but ultimately, you find these locations, set them up. It's very simple. Drive an anchor in the ground. I got my uh, trap right here. And all I'm going to do is probably just take a little bit of fish oil. And uh, I'm just going to right up the bank. Now, one thing also that just happened, you see that oil that's on the, the water here. That oil is going to go downstream now. So any coon or whatever working downstream may smell that and come up to this location where I have this. So that's one of the good things about oil. Uh, it streams right across the top of the water. Any animal that crosses it downstream will work upstream to your trap as well. But uh, find these locations, put them in, and, and you're going to have uh, a lot of success out there on your line. So let's head down the road, see if uh, we can put a few more in. Well, we got a nice one here. This is just another one of those situations where I call it a crossover set, but we're on this big waterway here. This is a, a stream that runs into the bigger river down here. And anytime you have these little tributaries coming in, you're gonna have these type of areas, which I call crossover. Basically, it's where the point of a, you know, a little stream meets a bigger stream. Uh, it can be a big stream meeting an even bigger river. But anywhere that these meet, the waterways, you're gonna have animal traffic come up and down both sides. This bridge right here is a coon highway. There are tracks going both ways underneath it in the mud. But ultimately, uh, I had two sets here. I must have caught him in this first one because he got over into the other one. So there's probably, I, I, I thought I had him tied off far enough, but it obviously wasn't. He's actually in both traps, but we're gonna reset these. But you know, pay attention when you're out there. These crossover areas where these waterways meet are fantastic spots for mink, muskrat, coon. Uh, you got a lot of different uh, times beaver will find their way onto these areas. But uh, ultimately, uh, it's just a, a great set location and make sure you pay attention on your line. We'll get this coon taken care of and I'll show you the whole remake so that uh, uh, you can see exactly how we had this set up. Well, we got this trap reset. This is the upper trap on this point. The coon tracks obviously are all messed up now. He's got that tore up. But the coon tracks were coming two different ways here. They were coming under this log and they were coming up over it. So I made a place right here Basically, we're just putting that back in the water right there, just underneath 
the water and that's all you really need to do right there um, I'm gonna put a little uh, fish oil trailings in here but uh, you know anytime you see sign like this anytime that the animals you know tracks are going both ways you just can't you, you can't get a better spot than that and you know any one of these waterways across the country is going to have other waterways running into it which uh, you have these crossover locations it doesn't funnel them down small like into a narrow spot they still are giving us that sign they're working up under these bridges more often than not those animals are going to go under the bridge as opposed to over the road it's a safer travel way it uh, also they can do some hunting for food it gives them shelter cover and they're going to hug those walls so this is a good set and, and uh we'll get some more fish oil in here but this might take uh, another one tonight and hopefully we'll get another one over here as well i'm going to reset this one now we're just putting that right under the water that's right where i had it using that rock just right there come right here and if they choose to go under the log we got them covered on the other side of it and if they choose to go up over we got them covered on the other side so we got two sets here I guess uh, my six foot extension was just enough to get that other coon to that other trap and he was in both of them took a double away from us maybe if another one was running with him but ultimately that's it they're very easy to put in these sets are deadly too as you can see um, but uh, ultimately, we're going to have more action here, and it's just a, a coon highway up along here. We got a cornfield over here. We got the bigger river down there. They're going to work in and under this bridge every night, and uh, I'm sure we're going to probably have some action here tomorrow. But look for these spots out on your line, and uh, anywhere in America, you're going to have bridges and roadways and streams and other streams, and you're going to find these locations anywhere where there's raccoon. Well, this week I wanted to talk to you a little bit about our Reaper water bait. Um, this is a multi-layered uh, water bait. It's got a bunch of good aromas that are blended into this. Not a paste, but not a liquid bait either. It's, it's a, a good mixture of a bunch of different ingredients. we got a bunch of different aromas coming out. You can smell the different layers, the sweet, the fish, all the different things that are going to be attractive to a lot of animals when you're out there on your water line. This is gonna work good for you for coon, mink, muskrat, otter. It's gonna work in your pocket sets, your crossover sets, up under roots. It's gonna work anywhere uh, for you in those situations. And it's just something that we're really proud of with uh, a lot of the different ingredients and, and scents that we have coming out of it. And if you get an opportunity and you need something for your water lines, make sure you check out our Reaper and I'm sure you're gonna be satisfied with it. Well, here's another one of those situations that I've talked about the crossover. As you can see, we got a nice double and coon back here, but this is the Susquehanna River, the main artery in Pennsylvania. This is another uh, tributary that runs in. I've been setting this, and if you've seen any of my old DVDs or even on the TV show before, I've actually caught a lot of animals right here at this point. Uh, I've been setting it since I've had a driver's license for 30 some years. I've caught dozens of mink here, I've caught dozens of coons, and I catch a rat here and there. But ultimately, we've caught beaver just up the stream 20 yards by that big tree. We've caught beaver on this point over here. Uh, a lot of the, the sets that I make are in a lot of the same places I've trapped for 30 years because they're just normal animal traffic uh, highway. Just another example of a big waterway where another little tributary runs into it. This tree wasn't here last year. The Y water brings it in and uh, it changes from year to year, but it doesn't change the viability of having these sets here. It doesn't matter if a tree roots out here like this. I can remember one year, uh, I think it's even in my coon video, one year there was a big stump here and we were setting back in under the stump. But ultimately it changes every year. So don't think if you go in there one year and catch animals and you love the set and you go back next year and the high waters changed it all, it doesn't mean that you're not going to catch animals. Just find and pick and choose your best possible you know sets and you're going to catch animals uh, every year at these locations well they're pretty nice coons actually really nice coons we're going to uh probably get them tanned but uh let me show you how these sets were in here they got this pretty pretty tore up 
but uh, ultimately they're working along this bank right here and then working up you know through these trees and uh working their way out to you know up through that creek so we'll get this untangled here he's got it pretty well up under here after getting smacked in the face that'll wake you up on a brisk day get smacked in the face is one of those uh one of those twigs that always wakes you up that feels real good there we go now all i did here is i just made a place right here and had that trap bedded right in this mud right where they're gonna walk and that's all you really need they're gonna work up along this side right here and then head up this smaller creek. But ultimately, these sets are, are really, really good. You can see the tracks right there. Uh, they were, it was just polluted with tracks here when I set this yesterday. But I actually uh, haven't been in here for about, I probably haven't trapped this actual spot. I haven't come over here for a couple years, but there's five or six, seven spots over here that I've trapped for 30 years and they're good every year, year in, year out. So when you find these spots, I call it a crossover. It's not your traditional crossover, an otter crossover, a beaver crossover. And I call it a crossover because it crosses over the point of where these tributaries meet. We had this one right here. You can see where they come up on the bank here too. If they don't go the whole way down around, they're cutting up over here. And you know, there were tracks here and tracks there. So I tried to cover both of my angles. And then this one, we just had it set right there like that, right along the edge. Just a perfect spot right there. But you can see where they have been working up and in and out along here. And you're gonna find these type of places everywhere on your line across America. So if you have any tributaries that are running into bigger waterways, and you have points and, and, and areas that have these type of crossovers, don't pass them up. They're just as good as a culvert set, and uh, they're, they're fantastic. So two nice coons, and we're going to head on down the road and check some more traps. This is one of those situations that always stand out when you're out in nature. This is an old cottonwood tree. We're down here in this bottom. There's a bunch of old dilapidated buildings. It looks like an old farmstead that uh, or an old homestead that was here it's just you know you think about everything that probably went on here the kids running around and and all this different history that's down in this bottom here but this cottonwood tree has some history as well as you can see here about a foot across is different colors going to this uh, hole in the tree this hollow tree this hollow cottonwood that's actually where the coons have just consistently tore that bark up and the dirt that's on their their fur rubbing against the tree to where it's created that trail and that just stands right out to me well we got to put a set there so we're going to put a, a duke dog proof here and uh it's just a really really cool thing to see in nature to be out here uh find this uh old cottonwood that's got uh this trail going right up it and it's just something that's just really really awesome and we're just going to put this duke dog proof in the ground right here give it a little quarter turn and pound a little rebar in and we're good there we got that it's going around perfect and there's not much to make in these sets we're going to use our coon buster uh crawfish bait here and with that you're just getting about one full tablespoon and everything goes down in the trap we want everything down in there and that basically fills that up to right below the trigger you got that crawfish smell coming out of there and ultimately uh that's really all you need to do here those coons are obviously coming through here and using this tree as a den, uh, the winter's starting to break. It's a beautiful day today. It's going to be up to 60 tomorrow. All this snow's going to be gone. But we have a, a Duke dog proof right here, ready to go. Any coon that comes to this tree is going to smell that and work right in there. And we're going to have one here. Losing money on crop damage? Raccoons eating all your deer feed? 
We've got you covered at North American Trapper. Handle those raiders of the night with our Raccoon DP package. Start controlling those nest raiders by moving some soil today at NorthAmericanTrapper.com. You need to have faith in the baits and lures piquing the curiosity of those at large predators. North American Trapper has you covered on your quest with our skunk-based madness, crawfish-based coon buster, fish-based reaper, and our meat-based mountain man. North American Trapper baits and lures are all multi-layered and proven to help you become the best predation trapper that you can be. Take back control of the ecosystem that is yours and get our scent bundle at NorthAmericanTrapper.com for the next time you're out breaking dirt on the line. Well, we got another one. Uh, this is just an unbelievable game trail that goes right through here. Um, obviously, you can see I had two. He must have been coming this way from the riverbank. The riverbank's only about maybe 30 yards. I do have a game camera up here, so hopefully we have some good night footage on him. That's actually a really nice coon. That's a big coon right there. But uh, you can see this defined trail right here, how it just... Uh, you know, he just worked through here. You put that trap, that that Duke dog proof, you just take that and you put that right smack dab in the middle of the trail so they hit their nose on it when they come through. But uh, you can see that with that rebar in there also, he's got a full range of motion. We got two, three different swivel points. He's able to do that. He's not hurting himself. He's a little anxious right now because he's probably not seen a human this close to him ever. But uh, ultimately, put these sets in the ground. You're gonna you're gonna catch these animals, and you're you're gonna have a lot of fun as well as helping out a lot of landowners, farmers, ranchers, the ground nesting birds, especially down here on the riverbank. That's why they're running these riverbanks. They're looking for goose nests and pheasant nests in these fields, and and who knows what they're gonna run into. But he is a nice looking coon, and we're gonna take care of him, remake this, and. Uh, can't wait to get that uh, footage home there and see what we got, maybe him coming up and working the set. Well, this is a big coon here. This is uh, probably the biggest one we've caught so far. It's really windy out here today. Uh, we're right on this fence row here. We got this big willow behind us. Actually, Thad caught a couple here last year and he was gracious enough to let me set this this year and that's a beautiful raccoon. Uh, right on this old farmstead, the old homestead here. We caught that one in the cage trap earlier. Uh, we got this really nice coon here, but uh, the river's down here maybe about 300 yards, so he was probably working up here to check things out. And it's just another one out of the equation uh, over here at the, the farm that's not going to hassle any more corn or, or deal with any uh, ground nesting birds. But it's just a beautiful silver tipped raccoon and uh, couldn't be any happier. And I want to thank that for letting me take this spot. But we're going to get him taken care of, reset the tube DP in there, and uh, get her baited back up and go down on the river and see if we have more down there. Well, this week I wanted to talk a little bit about the baiting process uh, of the Duke cage trap. Now, as you can see, you just lift those rings up and you're setting the trap just like that. It's that easy to set the trap. Um, now, with bait, what I'm using, th these are just styrofoam balls that I got at Michael's. I tied on a piece of wire, but we soak that then in our magnet trailing set, which has a sweet scent and whatever, and that's going to actually be an eye appeal, and also some smell is going to go out. They're going to smell that and want to work into that. We're also putting our coon buster bait back here in the back. The animals walk in, hit this, trap goes off, and you can transport them to wherever you want. They can't get in through these cage walls to work the bait either. So you want all of your bait and set back here to where they have to come back and hit this pan right here, which in turn sets the trap off. They're caught, pick them up, take them to where you want. But ultimately, we're using a little bit of eye appeal, a little bit of food set in the back, very easy to set. And this is just a wonderful piece of equipment that anybody out there, ranchers, farmers, homeowners, doesn't matter where you live, this Duke cage trap can help you solve pretty much every problem that you're having with a nuisance crate. Well, here's another one of those situations that uh, we're down here at this old homestead 
And these coons, when you have old rundown buildings like this, you're going to have these coons and skunks and things that are going to get in here for shelter. They're going to use this for, you know, comfort. They're going to use it for safety and all those. And as you see here, we have this tin and this wood uh, rail here, and there's some old tracks, remnants of it, in the snow. Now, I don't want to put this trap right in the middle of the trail like that. I just don't want that because it's not open from both ends. So what I'm going to do is bring it right out here to where when this door comes up, you're going to see that that's going to catch their attention and we're going to give a little trailing scent, but right back here is where our ball is going to go. Now this is our, our ball again that we're using um, in our cage traps and we're going to soak that with our magnet trailing scent. Now as you can see I'm going to do it right here in front of the cage so that that comes in this way. I don't want a lot of scent out here and whatever. I want them to hit that and then work in. So we'll just take that in through. We got our ball now hanging in the back that they can't get through uh, or can't get to through the cage back here. And that's got all of our trailing scent on it. So that's going to hang there. And as you can see, any wind blows, that's going to move. And that's exactly what we want. Um, the only thing else that I'm going to do is put a little of our coon buster bait in there. And I'm going to get it back here. I'm not going to put it around and, and things of that nature. I want them to smell that. I want them to smell that uh, crawfish scent coming out of here and knowing that they have to go in through this cage to get to it. So we're just going to dump some of that right down through the screen to where it's only in the trap. And I can actually smell the, the crawfish coming out of this. Man, that's good. But they're going to smell that too. And, and ultimately, that's all you have to do if you're a homeowner, rancher, trapper, whatever. These cage traps work great. Uh, I don't, like I said, put bait around to, to get them in there. Because if you do have something that, uh, if you're using a different bait or whatever bait you're using, if they have something that they taste and they're like, nah, I don't want it, they're going to be moving away. If they don't like your bait and you have it in the back, they don't taste it till they've already set the trap off. So you're not you're not educating them any way out here until they get in the trap and boom, it goes down, they're in there, and you got yourself uh, an animal, and, and that's exactly what you want as a homeowner. We're going to show you some other things where we're catching uh, skunks and coons for homeowners, but ultimately we got our ball here that's got our trailing scent on it, and uh, as I said, all I do is just pour that I can even pour a little more on there and it soaks right into into that uh, white styrofoam ball and that just hangs there that's a sweet flavor going out through there we also have the crawfish scent going out through there and if there's any coons or skunks that come by here we're gonna have them when we come in tomorrow but uh, make sure you uh, get a few of these and they're gonna help you around your house on your farm or on your ranch uh, control your predators and your your ground nesting uh, birds will thrive a little bit more. Well, we connected again with the Duke cage trap. We, uh, we made this set yesterday. Actually, we made this set and filmed the making this particular set where these coons run in and out of this old homestead here. Um, very simply, we got our magnet sitting on this uh, white ball in the back that entices them in. Uh, we had a little bit of our coon buster in there and this one uh, came in and worked it. But um, this is a, a, just a testimony to the, to the Duke cage trap. It's, it's a really good tool, especially for you homeowners out there. I mean, we're over here on a farm right now doing some depredation for him. But if you own a house out there or you're having some issues where animals are getting under your, your house or your garage or whatever, groundhogs, skunks, possums, raccoons, foxes, if you're having problems with chickens, um, you know, animals getting your chickens, whether it's foxes or things like that. These cage traps can catch these animals for you so you can get them off your property and continue to uh, move forward with that. But ultimately, uh, I told you before, they have this protective plate where I can now pick that animal up. 
I can take this animal anywhere I want to go now. If I want to go release them, I can do that. Or if I, you know, want to dispatch them, uh, I can do that as well. But you can see that's a, uh, a good device, a good safety device for you there. Um, but ultimately, we're going to get this raccoon taken care of. And uh, as you can see, we're getting it done with the Duke cage trap, and you can too. Uh, and it's just really awesome to be out here. You know, but as you can see, for you homeowners out there, this is a really good tool for you. Um, make sure you look up uh, these Duke cage traps on duketraps.com because they are a fantastic tool to use in these type of situations. So we're going to get this coon taken care of, reset it, and hopefully come back in here and have another one tomorrow. Three more nice coons here. I can't wait to see the stealth cam 4K footage of what maybe transpired here like we did the last time we were in here. Had one in the cage trap, two in the DPs on each side. It's just an unbelievable location here. This farmer's got this junk pile. I fully expected to have more skunks than coons here, but we've uh, been pounding the coons, and I, like I said, can't wait to see that stealth cam 4K coverage. Uh, we showed you the other day, but on this pond up here where we had a double, we got another double there today as well. So uh, we're putting up a lot of good, uh, good numbers. Uh, I'm really happy with what is transpiring with both of my baits, the Reaper and the Coon Buster, um, using the trailing scent, the magnet with it. It's just, you know, you can just see it. They're, they're just following it right into the cage trap, nose to the ground and uh it's really really putting up some uh good fur for us um here doing this predation stuff and like i said earlier we're helping out the farmers the ranchers we're helping out those ground nesting birds and anybody out there on your land you can do this whether you have two traps one trap half a dozen or a hundred you can go out there put these in the ground Take a few of these predators out of the equation and you're going to help your ground nesting birds as well. But I couldn't be any happier. We're going to get these three out here. I got these three reset and we're going to go home and see what we got on this stealth cam because I fully expect it to be pretty good. Well, this week I wanted to uh, just kind of show you our Coon Buster DP bait. Um, it's not just a DP bait. You can use this in your cage straps. You can even put this down the uh pocket set or whatever but ultimately it's saturated in crawfish oil and there's a reason for that uh the dps that we're using are imitating a crawfish hole in nature and we want that smell coming out of there that's why we created this that's why it's soaked in crawfish oil and we have about seven or eight different ingredients in it that all have their own unique sense texture and smell uh, and, and ultimately it's, it's something that we've had some really good success with. And if you get an opportunity, make sure you check that out. But the Coon Buster is, uh, something that's going to work for you in all those situations, whether it's your cage traps around your house, whether you're trying to take raccoons out of the population because they're crop damage or just having some issues with them, uh, dealing with, uh, destructive, things happening around your property. But uh, ultimately, we're very happy with what we've come up with here with the uh, essence of crawfish. And you know, it's, it's just something that um, we're really proud of. And if you get an opportunity, check that out because I'm sure that'll work for you in the situations that you need it. I want to take a little time here and show you this. This is actually a natural spring that stays open the whole winter. And there is literally a coon trail here tracks going both ways this is a hot spot we're actually going to put four duke dps in here um the one thing about this that i wanted to uh mention is the duke dp itself resembles a crawfish hole in nature when you have this set that resembles a crawfish hole when you push this in the ground that looks like a crawfish hole a crawfish burrow and anywhere across this country pretty much you're going to have near these waterways where crawfish burrow in and the coons smell that, see it, and they automatically reach in there. So one of the things that this Duke DP does for you is imitate the crawfish hole in nature. And our bait, the Coon Buster, is crawfish based and we did that for a purpose because that's a big part of the diet for raccoons. And we're going to put four of them in here along here. And I fully expect to have some serious action tonight, but it's, it's just amazing 
to be able to come in here and uh, see this type of sign, but let signs here because this spring is a natural spring and it's here all winter and it's open. I got that there. Well, these DPs, you want to have it right kind of where they have to smack their nose on it in the trail. This is just one of those spots where, you, you know, it's awfully thick and muddy, but we're definitely going to have some good action here tonight. No doubt in my mind. And this is the Tomb Buster. Get some of that down in there. You really don't need that much. It's pretty potent stuff. Try and get everything down in there. And not that we really need it here, but we'll just put a little bit of trail and scent on it to keep it right there, our magnet. Um, that's how quick and easy it is to put these in. I'm gonna put three more around this edge. You never know, if you're gonna put one at a place, you should always put more than one. But the one biggest thing that you gotta keep in mind, that Duke DP imitates a crawfish hole in nature. And the more you can use these in these type of situations around your land, your property, um, you're gonna really do a good job controlling those predators if you can find these type of situations. Well, we got our four sets in here. Hopefully uh, we have some action. Get our last bit out of this jar. We use about five jars of this today, but that'll work. And we'll just, I had to come up here on the high bank because that's awfully muddy down there. We're just gonna put a little trailing set right down up to it. But ultimately, uh, these Duke DPs represent that uh, crawfish hole in nature. And in conjunction with our crawfish bait, these are deadly sets anywhere across America. If you use these Duke DPs and uh, have something down in there like our coon buster, you are going to be successful. And ultimately, it would not surprise me if we came in here and had a double, maybe a triple, and maybe four of them bouncing when we come back to check this. But always look for these type of spots right here this spring. It's always open water. It's gonna be a draw to all the wildlife. Summer, fall, winter, spring, they're gonna work this basin. And hopefully, uh, since we got our traps in here, hopefully they work it tonight. North American Trapper has got you covered when it comes to essential trapping baits and lures. When you're moving soil out of the field, know that you're getting the best sense available with the North American Trapper's line. Go to NorthAmericanTrapper.com today and explore the mountain man in you. North American Trapper Predation Packages. Get any one of our specific trapping packages that has been ultimately designed to help you become the master predation controller of your farm, ranch, or hunting lease. Control the predators that are costing you time and money and get out there trapping today with one of our North American Trapper Predation Boxes. All of the packages come with the trapping essentials to get you out in the field, plus an instructional DVD that will show you the way. Visit us at NorthAmericanTrapper.com and start breaking dirt today. Well, we got a nice double here. We just made these sets yesterday. Um, they come in here and they work across this, uh, you know, little bench right here. You know, as the water succeeds, they keep going out and keep going out. And, you know, there's crawfish holes in here, and that just goes along with our crawfish base bait and our sweet trailing set. It makes a nice uh, combination for this type of a setup. We probably if we'd have put three or four sets here. We might have had three or four, but uh, ultimately, as you can see, these are two really nice sized coon. Um, ultimately, this is uh, exactly what we're out here trying to do. Uh, we're on this one farm right here, and he's having, as we talked, you know, twenty, twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars worth of damage a year. Um, it gives us something to get out here and do some uh, do some good things in the in the late winter and early spring as well here on the depredation in South Dakota but ultimately two really nice coons and they, the, the fur on them still looks pretty good as well for this time of year. Neither one of these is rubbed up and uh, ultimately these are going to make a nice tan pelt 
that we can, uh, you know, get tanned and give away and, and, you know, or put in a camp or in our house and remember this day uh, many years down the road. But uh, it's just really awesome. These Duke dog proofs doing the job again. Boom, boom, double. And we have about 120, 130 sets out right now. Uh, this is the ones we only put out about a half a dozen the other day. And we had to run by these to go set more today. And figured we'd stop and we ended up getting a double. So uh, we're going to have a check uh, with about 130 of them out there. So I expect us to have a good pile of coon. But ultimately, uh, this is what we're looking for. And we're going to get these coon taken care of and remake the set. Oh, here's another one of these awesome situations. We got one here. We got one over here. And we also have another one over there. So we got a triple. Uh, this one here, that's a big coon right there. Oh, that's a dandy. They're all pretty nice coon, but this is another one of them places. These junk piles and these type of areas where you have brush and, and all the different things. You're going to have coons, skunks pretty much everything rooting in here and this is actually a perfect when we were in here setting the other day i had a rabbit two or three feet from me and you know that rabbit's up under there so if, if that rabbit lays little babies these coons are going to get up there and, and kill them and and it's nice to get these uh, out of the population um but ultimately we're on this nice little pond here um we got three nice coons one here one behind me and we got another one right over here but ultimately you can see the tunnels and everything up through here but when you're out here trapping just pay attention to the sign it's going to give you everything you need and it doesn't matter where you're at across the country if you're on a farm if you're on a ranch if you're out in the woods if you're working along a stream fishing you can pay attention if you're fishing in june for catfish or trout or wherever you are and you see a coon track put that in the back of your mind Come trapping season or come the following season, if you have a predation program like this, get out there. Remember, that's a place you can go set. And ultimately, you're going to take these uh, predators out of the equation, and it's going to uh, help out those ground nesting birds and your farmers and ranchers alike. But uh, this is just a highway, and I kind of figured we were going to come in here today and have some. But I'm going to take care of these coons, and then we're going to get this reset, and hopefully come back in here tomorrow and have some more. Well, we got another nice coon here. Uh, we just took that one out of the trap up there by that willow tree, and now we're down by the creek. We got one here. We got another one behind the trailer here. Uh, we got a game camera over there. I'm not quite sure if it picked it up because we had it kind of on the one that was closest to the riverbank here. But uh, ultimately, a bunch of junk piles behind us here right along the river. And... Uh, Taking another coon, another predator out of the equation for the farm here, and uh, that's what we're here to do. So we'll get this one taken care of, remake this uh, Duke dog proof here, put a little coon buster in it, a little bit of magnet, and uh, hopefully we'll have another one tomorrow. Well, I want to take a little time to talk to you about the DS4K Max that Stealth Cam puts out. We're actually using a lot of these game cameras now. We're actually putting them on a lot of our sets to see how the animals are actually working our sets, how they're approaching the, the different sets that we have out there. And these have been a very valuable tool for us in allowing us to actually see how our baits and lures are, are working, if we're getting, you know, what type of percentages uh, at each set, are they working the set every animal that comes by, are some not working the sets, and it's allowing us to really gather a lot of information that's helping us in the field on many different levels. So I'd highly recommend you check out these Stealth Cam cameras, their whole product line, they have a lot of different cameras that can suit a lot of different budgets, but this uh, 4K Max here, DS4K Max, is really, really good. It takes night video up to about 180 seconds, and honestly, it's been a very valuable tool for us in uh, a lot of different processes that we're doing out there on the line. So make sure you check out that whole line and I think you're gonna find something that'll help you be successful as well. Well, we got a nice double here. Uh, came in here, made these sets. Uh, I had one right here. That coon got down in under there, under this uh, pipe. And then I had one right here at the base of that uh, 
old worn out stump and you know you got these big cottonwood trees right here we got this whole draw the river's right behind us here and then this nice grassland up here in this draw where uh these coons are going to feed and hunt plus we have the the cornfield behind us but uh we got a nice double here two sets two more coon um anytime you're out there you're going to see old fallen trees logs pipes Anytime you have that situation, you're gonna have coons, skunks, possums. Out here in the west, you're gonna have porcupines. All of these critters are gonna be in here rooting through these, looking for grubs, looking for mice, looking for berries, whatever down through here. And uh, if you find these locations, put these in. And you know, we got two Duke dog proofs here, and we got two nice coons and uh, Honestly, you can't get much better than this right here as, as a complete location to put your sets. You got the water's edge which funnels them in. You got the field's edge here that funnels them in. You got the cottonwood rolls. These are big den trees. They're going to get up in these trees. And then you have all this uh, extracurricular activities down here in the roots and the tunnels and the tubes. And they're down here rooting. But uh, perfect location. Anytime you see this on your line, make sure you put some sets in. We're gonna get these two coon taken care of. That one trap's gonna be set again right over here off of that fence post. And I'm gonna put the other one right smack dab in the middle to where they have to knock their nose on it, whether they're going in or coming from the middle of that uh, tree system there. So, pretty awesome, two more coons. Well, we got those reset. We got this nice hollow log here, plus this one on the back side over here. Ultimately, come back here tomorrow and maybe have two more. Well, here's another one of those locations. It's really windy out here today, but we have this fence row again. I keep talking about fence rows and, and roads and crossovers and, and, and connection points with big eye peeling trees. These are the type of locations, uh, you know, you can see the catch circle here. We just got the one there. I just showed you the one down there, maybe about 15 feet. But ultimately, down in this bottom, they're going to be hunting. They're going to run these fence rows. They're going to mark the territory. They're going to mark their areas. And ultimately, uh, we're catching a lot of coons just by setting these edgeways. You don't have to do a lot of walking. You don't have to do a lot of... Uh, searching you're just looking for a little bit of sign and then you're just putting your dps in these two dps they come by they get their hands down in there it's over and and they're here for you and you're you're doing so much of a service for the farmer yourself if you're a landowner ranchers um it's just something that is needed especially with today the the way human expansion is moving outwards we're decreasing the area that these animals have to feed and 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 hunt and and we're putting them pushing them farther and farther into a, a smaller and smaller area which ultimately is is destroying a lot of other small game and prey populations but we got two nice coons here uh we got these sets back in the ground and out here the wind's blowing today but uh, ultimately it's beautiful and we're doing a, a good service for the rancher here and the farmers and that's exactly why we're out here so we'll get these loaded up and head on down the road and hopefully have a couple more well here's one of those other situations where we're on the riverbank it's just beautiful we got these cottonwood draws what we got here is uh this silver tip one really silver coon over here we got a one and a half double jaw dude we set that on this trail just in case a fox might come by and then we have that nice one down on the end in a duke dog proof so let's go take a look at them yep we got this nice one right here in the duke double jaw and then we got this one over here put his hand in a in a dog proof but ultimately you can see all that trails and stuff going down in the bottom there where uh, those coons are down in there working. This one is an absolute beast. That's a big coon right there. 
and uh, ultimately you can see how that trails goes down through there we do have a game camera on this so hopefully we have some night footage that we're intersplicing here but those coons get down in this bottom and you'll see all these reeds and stuff down here that's perfect habitat for ducks geese uh, quail also pheasant they get down in there and nest these coons are down in there rooting they find those nests that whole nest is gone plus the farmer one of the main reasons we're here is to help him save money on his crops but the wind really blows up here and what's really nice when we're putting our baits and lures in these holes and stuff it's going right down over the bank so if they were working they're coming back up through and that's one of the things that you have to really pay attention to when you're out there pay attention to that prevailing wind direction because you want your sets to have that scent going down into the areas where there's the most animal traffic. And we picked up two beauties here, a nice silver tip and this big one here. And uh, we're gonna take care of them and head on down the road and hopefully catch some more. Well, as you can see, the weather's changed on us. Uh, the other day we were out here checking and we got about 50 and, and today we're putting uh, another hurting on them. But what you can see here, we're down in this cottonwood draw and there's a few deer stands over here where they're feeding the deer to come in. These raccoons, for you hunters out there and anybody who's had a game camera on your feed, you know that the raccoons and other animals besides the deer are in there pounding it. And ultimately, you can see the trails here. Uh, these are deer trails and also game trails with the coons are running. One thing I did want to mention, when you're out there putting these Duke DPs in, to uh, catch these coons and take them out of the population to save on your deer feed, make sure you do not set on your feed. You'll catch those critters the first night or two, but you're going to actually really smarten them up to where they're gonna associate that food source with danger. Now, you set 20, 30, 40, 50 yards back on these game trails, you're catching them working to there they don't associate that deer feed with danger and you're gonna catch a lot more. It's gonna take you a little longer to get the bigger numbers, but you're gonna get them over and over and over when you're off of that food source. So you hunters out there that are trying to save money on your deer feed, make sure you're setting back off of the trails, not on the food source. And uh, this is number seven today. We're about 20, 20 traps in. We're gonna we're gonna catch quite a few today, and that's gonna help out in all of these uh, processes that we're out here trying to do. We got ourselves another nice coon here. We set this set uh, on this on this two track. We got this fence row here working down into these cornfields, and uh, second check, second coon. Uh, you can't get much better than that. But anytime you can find these these, I call them crossover or pinch points or you know where you have a couple different places where the coons are going to be running they're going to run this two track they're going to run this fence row you got this big tree right here in the middle that's a, a just a eye appeal they're going to come in here climb up there but uh, ultimately it's a nice coon we're going to help out the farmer here but you know another thing with these dps uh they just hold them there the the dog proof trap is is a trap that just holds us anybody looking to uh alleviate some of the issues that these raccoons cause you uh these duke dog proofs are, are fantastic and i highly recommend you get some of them but uh we're gonna get this coon taken care of reset this and uh hopefully we'll come back third check third coon this old willow tree as we mentioned the other day when we had that really nice coon here on that sunny day on our last check that willow tree right here is just a landmark, and, and that is going to attract every coon, every critter around this area. Um, that's one of the things for you landowners out there, ranchers, farmers, deer hunters that are going to try and catch some of these animals to help yourselves out. Learn your land, and, and what I mean by that is the rivers down here, we know those coons are going to work the river. But we also know they're going to work up this fence row to get to this big willow tree because they always do. And, and on your land, find out what those landmarks are. Follow the sign. Come out if you have snow wherever you live. Come out and check where the tracks are. If you, if you know in the fall the coons are running. 
down in your cornfields up to a certain uh, landmark tree or whatever, put that in the back of your mind, and you know that you're going to have a good set there every time. But uh, if you can find these points of reference, they're going to help you out, and obviously it helped us out here again today. Uh, this is our third check here and our third coon. But pay attention to your own geographical features on your land and, and find those points of reference to where these critters are going continuously and that's where you want to put these DPs or any traps that you have uh, to try and control these populations. The difference a day makes, 70 degrees yesterday and 20 and snowy and blustery today, but you know, we talked about this. This is where we had that double uh, last time we came in and checked and we got all these nice reeds and stuff down in here where the geese, the ducks and all that are gonna be uh, down in there nesting. We got a highway here, I mean just a coon highway up through here, working up this edge, working down over. If you can find these locations, you're gonna be successful anywhere. The animals are gonna tell you where they're at. That Duke DP is uh, just an absolute coon taker. All we're using is a little bit of bait in the bottom. They get their fingers down under there, they're pulling up, and a little bit of our uh, magnet trailing scent uh, to lure them into it. But ultimately, even though it's cold, even though it's snowy, we're still out here in nature. Uh, we're doing a service for the farmers here, the ranchers, the ground nesting birds, and ultimately uh, it's uh, it's fun to be out here and do this. And, and these tools and techniques are going to work for you on any of your land, whether it be your hunting land, your leases, your farms, your ranches. You can take these animals out of the population. It's going to save you money in the long run. It's going to help your ground nesting birds. And that Duke uh, dog proof is going to be the tool that helps get that done for you. So we're going to take care of this guy. It's a pretty nice coon. And uh, we're going to head on down the road and see if we have a couple more before, uh, before we get snowed in. Well, we got another nice coon here. Uh, that weather's coming in. That front's coming through. But these coons moved again last night. Uh, we showed you a triple we caught here the other day on this junk pile. And uh, we're in here on Ross's ground um, getting some of these coons out of the equation. For all you farmers out there, ranchers, anybody that has a uh, you know food source that these coons are going to be getting into and costing you money, these Duke dog proofs are going to work fantastic for you. And as you can see, you just set them on the trails, get them in there, get a little bit of that bait down in there, and they're going to come in, hit that trigger, and you're going to get them out of that equation. But ultimately, uh, they're going to run here. We're, we're on these trails along this uh, pond here, and uh, we're getting them going to and from the feedlots and the cornfields, uh, keeping them away from doing their destruction out there. But make sure you look into getting some of these Duke dog proofs because they are a raccoon uh, machine, and they're going to help you take them out of your equation and uh, save money on your bottom line as well.